Hello and welcome to Today in History. My name is Sotonye Afiasimba. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, perhaps now is the right time to do so. What I do is I bring um, information about stuff that happened today in history. So hence the title of the, the channel. So, um, yeah, I bring interesting facts from all over the world. Um, things that I think that we should know. Um, yeah, I try and spread across all peoples and cultures. Um, obviously, for some cultures, it's more difficult to um, find information about stuff that happened on this day. Um, so you'll find that most of the information I have been able to um, get online uh, from usually English-speaking countries. But as time goes on, I will um, try my best to expandiate and be as inclusive as possible. So with that said, let's get cracking. Um, give me a thumbs up if you like the content at the end of this video, obviously, and um, I shall get rolling. So I usually start with rolling back the blind. And um, so that's what exactly what I'm going to do right now. So we're going to move back the blinds, like I said earlier, to the year 1755. So September 24th, 1755, we have this man called John Marshall. He was the fourth Chief Justice of the United States of America and principal founder of the U.S. system of constitutional law, including the doctrine of judicial review. He was born on this day in 1755. So that's John Marshall, that's a book, obviously, read by Robert Fass, unabridged, um, probably an audio book. Okay, so that is what John Marshall looks like, the Chief Justice who saved the nation. So go check it out if you're interested in finding out more about John Marshall. Born on this day in 1755. 1869. This is a bit, uh, it's close to my heart, this one. Plummeting gold prices. I do um, forex trading now, well, on a daily basis at the moment. So that's my other thing. Um, so on this day, 1869, plummeting gold prices led to a panic known as Black Friday. When US President Ulysses Grant, after learning of an attempt by Jay Gold, interesting name, but it's spelled a bit differently. So G-O-U-L-D. And James Fisk. <laughs> uh, Fisk um, sounds like um, Frisk, doesn't it? You want to you search, search someone, trying to frisk them to see if they've got any gold in their pockets. Anyway, that's funny. To drive up the gold. So I'm going I'm to take this again. Sorry, guys. So plummeting gold prices led to a panic known as Black Friday. When U.S. President Ulysses Grant after learning of an attempt by these guys I mentioned, Jay Gold and James Fisk, to drive up the gold market, ordered $4 million of government gold to be sold on the market. Wow. So that's what happened on this day. That's the reason why we had Black Friday in 1869. So history could repeat itself. You never know. Um, at the moment of recording this, gold prices have been plummeting for the last few days. At this very moment, it is plummeting as I speak. It's 1736 on the 24th of September in the United Kingdom. Okay, so um, I'll show you a picture of um, this is the Chief Justice, I beg your pardon. Let's see if we can find something relating to gold. Yeah, so Black Friday. Um, I'll move the image of it so you can see what's happening or what happened on this day. So that's Black Friday and that this was how um, I guess prices of stocks and commodities were um, written down um, way back in 1869. So if you look very carefully at this, um, I'm going to enlarge it so you can see what it says, mutation of gold. That looks like mutation to me, which is it's an old word for um, movement. 
movement. So if you see here, rotation of gold, September 24th, um, 1869. I'm going to zoom back so you can see the dates, 1869, okay? So that's what happened on this day, 151 years ago. Um, we're hoping history doesn't repeat itself. Okay, um, 1896, F. Scott Fitzgerald. That's him pictured here. He was an American novelist, so an essayist, screenwriter, and short story writer. Although he was best known for his novels depicting the flamboyance and excess of the Jazz Age, the term which he coined is his most brilliant novel is The Great Gatsby. He died on this day in, he died on the 21st of December, 1940. So that's F. Scott Fitzgerald, American novelist, essay, screenwriter, and short story writer. Best known for The Great Gatsby. I think it was <clears throat> made into a movie. So go check it out. Um, Google it up. Okay, 1934. Babe Ruth. I have a video of Babe Ruth already, so go check that out as well. Um, but that's favorite picture here. Um, on this day, he played his last baseball game for the New York Yankees at Yankee Stadium. So that's Babe Ruth who, who made history on this day when he played his last baseball game. This happened in the year. 1934. 1936, this is a man who's created characters there to our hearts, for those of us who were born in the 70s, possibly the 80s as well. That's Jim Henson, American puppeteer. He was born on this day in 1936 in Greenville, Mississippi. Died May 16, 1990 at the youngish age of 53 in New York City. Now, why is this guy famous? One name, Kermit the Frog. And um, I'll show you. That's him and his puppets. Um, obviously, Kermit's nowhere here. But um, we'll keep going. There we, there we are. Good old Kermit the Frog. Full name is Ashton Baldwin Carter. So he is, like I mentioned earlier, earlier, he's an American physicist. He's also a policy professor, public American public policy professor, who served as the 25th Secretary of Defense from February 2015 to January 2017. He is currently director of the Belfer Center for Science and International Affairs at Harvard Kennedy School. Carter began his career as a physicist after a brief experience as an analyst for the Congressional Office of Technology Assessment. He switched careers to public policy. So 
Next, on this day, 1957, these nine individuals that we see here, six ladies and three gentlemen, are called the Little Rock Nine. Now, who were these young people? I'm going to read about this now. So, in 1957, on this day, racial desegregation took center stage when federal troops were dispatched to Little Rock, Arkansas, to maintain order and enforce the right of black students to attend the local public high school. Little Rock Nine were a group of nine African-American students, obviously, as you can see from this picture. Um, they were enrolled in Little Rock Central High School in 1957. So it was early on this month. I think it was on the 9th of September. Okay. So the enrollment was followed by a Little Rock crisis in which the students were initially prevented from entering the racially segregated school by Orville Forbes, who was the governor of Arkansas. They then attended after the intervention of President Dwight D. Eisenhower. Their names were Ernest Green, who was born in 1941, Elizabeth Eckford, born 1941, Jefferson Thomas, born 1942, sadly died in 2010, Terence Roberts, born 1941, Carlotta Walls, Lanier, born in 1942, Minnie Jean Brown, born 1941, Gloria Ray Carmock, born 1942, Thelma Mothershed, born 1940, and Melva Patillo Beals, who was born in 1941. Ernest Green was the first African-American to graduate from Central High School. So these people made history on this day um, in the fight for racial desegregation. They are called the Little Rock Nine. So this day, in 1957. 1993. Norodom Sihanouk was crowned King of Cambodia for the second time. So that's the King of Cambodia. So a very young guy. He was a prince, I guess, at this time. And I'm not sure pictures of him. That's him as a much older man. Young man here. That's him as a prince, Prince Norodom Sihanouk of Cambodia. So, it's the different faces of uh, the King of Cambodia. He's held other positions as well, but uh, this is the most notable one. So, he was crowned King of Cambodia for the second time on this day in 1993. Now, next is Pride and prejudice. I'll talk a bit about this because I have watched a few episodes um, of this series. I found it quite interesting. You know, it, it throws light into British um, aristocracy and their dealings with the not so aristocratic. Let, let's just put it as nicely as we can. So I'll read a bit about this. So the BBC miniseries Pride, Pride and Prejudice, starring Colin Firth and Jennifer L debuted on British television on this day, and it became one of the most acclaimed adaptations of Jane Austen's classic novel. Pride and Prejudice was a romantic novel, is a romantic novel by Jane Austen, published anonymously in three volumes in 1813. It's a classic of English literature, written with incisive wit and superb character delineation. It centers on the turbulent relationship between Elizabeth Bennet, the daughter of a country gentleman, and Fitzwilliam Darcy. Yeah, I remember Mr. Darcy, yeah. A rich aristocratic land border. Pride and Prejudice is set in rural England in the early 19th century and follows the Bennet family, which includes five very different sisters. So, Remember what I said earlier about character delineation? So five very different sisters. That's quite interesting. Mrs. Bennet, as a mother, most mothers would, she is anxious 
to see how all her daughters married. Yeah, so that's what I was referring to, that, that most mothers would want to see their daughters married, especially as the mother's family estate is to be inherited by William Collins when Mr. Bennett dies. At the ball, the wealthy and newly arrived Charles Bingley takes an immediate interest in the eldest Bennett's daughter, the beautiful and shy Jane. I guess she is the um, eponymous character in this uh, novel, so Jane Austen. The encounter between his friend Darcy and Elizabeth is less cordial. Although Austen shows them intrigued by each other, she reverses the convention of first impressions. Pride of rank and fortune and prejudice against the social inferiority of Elizabeth's family hold Darcy aloof, while Elizabeth is equally fired, both by the pride of self-respect and by prejudice against Darcy's snobbery. Absolutely fascinating series. I think you should go check it out or you go read the book. You know, some people prefer reading books and uh, yeah. So, last but not least, a sad note on this day, five years ago, obviously, I don't want to share the um, pictures, but um, there was a stampede um, where it's reported that 2,400 pilgrims were killed. So for those of you who know, this is the um, Blackstone in um, Mecca, and it's uh, a Hajj, which is a yearly pilgrim age that um, Muslims make from all over the world to Mecca. So but on this day, um, there was a stampede. It says, according to Saudi officials, 769 people died in the stampede during the Hajj to Mecca. However, other estimates claim that more than 2,400 people were killed. This made it one of the deadliest accidents in the pilgrimages history. So, on that sad note, for those who are remembering their loved ones today who lost their lives in the Hajj on this day five years ago, um, our prayers are with you. Um, you stay safe as well. If you're attending the Hajj today or any time in the future, don't know what the coronavirus um, restrictions are in the Middle East at the moment. But yeah, uh, prayers are with you and thoughts go to you on this day. Um, so yeah, on that note, guys, I'm going to roll back the blind um, to close today's episode of Today in History. My name again is Sotoni Afiasimama. Thank you for hanging out with me for this um, 18 or so minutes. Um, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Do not forget to give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Also, subscribe by clicking the notification bell so that you receive notifications of my video uploads. Thanks again, guys. Stay safe. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.